All right. Well, thank you for joining us today at Matrix Networks on our webinar, um, highlighting a brand new solution from Matrix Networks. Um, we are going to be offering monitoring tools by Avic, and I want to tell you a little bit about why we brought this product on very briefly before Jeremy introduces the solution and how it fits for our MNet client. So um, over the years, Matrix has really developed our network chops, learning how to support our clients through voice first, then overall their, their larger design for WAN and LAN. And customers kept asking us to provide support for, on their network in a consistent way. And so we developed our MNet product. And as we've done that, it's really grown. And we have quite a few clients that are utilizing us to support their LAN infrastructure. And what we discovered was, you know, keeping up on documentation and troubleshooting was getting more and more complicated and that we had varying types of devices and solutions and architectures in place. And we wanted our team to be able to be very responsive very quickly, any number of them, um, without having to dig through copious documentation. Uh, so we went out and did a research project and our team brought together a couple of different solutions. And we ended up uh, selecting one we are really excited about. It's far more powerful than we even imagined. And we're just starting to figure out just what we can do with this platform. And we wanna share it with you as every one of our MNET clients will have access. <clears throat> and we will be using this to help support you and make sure that we're staying on top of what you need as our client. So with that, I'm gonna pass this off to Mr. Jeremy Ness, who is going to lead the show here. And um, thank you again for joining us. If you have questions, please submit them on the Q&A and we'll make sure and get those queued up. Uh, there are a couple different um, pieces to this. So there may be portions of this that you have questions on further. If you'd like a follow-up demo um, or how it'll fit in your own environment, please reach out to your client success or account executive. And with that, I will pass this off to Jeremy. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. All right, um, so again, I will be demoing kind of the new monitoring software that we're rolling out as part of AVIC, but they kind of touch on just you know, how we got here and what we we're doing previously and how this enables us to support all of you even better. So um, as Kyle mentioned, um, you know, we do have our MNET offering, which was born out of our clients saying, hey, you know, we keep calling you reactively or keep calling you for ad moves changes and our spend with you is very unreliable. And uh, we're often, you'll know, reach out to you in a reactive, um, fashion opposed to proactive. So we did pull out the MNET service. As many of you know, you know that's really us being an extension of your IT team, specifically kind of that network guy, right? Um, being you know maintaining documentation and visio diagrams and asset lists and um, patching, you know, as security issues arise. Um, part of that monitoring piece to allow us to be proactive opposed to reactive, uh, of course, was uh, the monitoring. To do monitoring, we were uh, utilizing a, a very popular product called PRTG. So for in your environments, we all install the uh, mini PC, but have that PRTG agent on it. Um, the, uh, the PRTG server to live in Azure, so it's not connect our infrastructure here, dependent on you know, us physically being up. Um, and PRTG is a very kind of traditional SNMP counter, right? Um, it would query and ping and a few various ways to make sure a device was up or down. And then you can get those device counters, right? Are we maxing CPU, RAM, uh, disk on any of the network appliances, since they are generally mini computers at the end of the day? And are we you know, saturating any uplinks, right? Um, so we're utilizing that to again, kind of get the, the health of the network, which is very traditional. I've been doing it for a long time. With that, we were still manually kind of keep all that documentation up to date, right? Uh, in terms of when you know, assets coming on and, and, and being retired and firmware versions and then also keeping you know, diagrams up to date. Right? As infrastructure got at remove, that's someone loading up a Visio document and uh, modifying it and making sure that you know that was all up to date, uh, which occasionally didn't get shared with with our, our clients, right? So um, and further in our practice, you know, that became hard for us to, to you know keep on top of it. Of course we did, but it's just very time consuming. Uh, so we've transitioned and um, deployed a new tool called AVIC. So uh, through that deployment, that PRTG infrastructure is still up there. Uh, it's still integrated, still doing monitoring, still calling our on-call if any equipment in your environments go down. Um, we're currently running in parallel and be cutting over probably in the next week to solely to AVIC. So um, the heart of AVIC is an AVIC collector. Uh, that's what, you know, we had a PRTG agent um, deployed on our, our mini PC environments uh, previously. To where this, you know, we've loaded the Avic collector side by side. 
The Ava collector, again, gives that foothold in the network. It is the thing that does the SNMP counting um, or SNMP polling, which Ava does. Uh, but it's so much more than that. It's also network equipment aware, which is one of the reasons we're transitioning to it. Uh, what that means, it's able to SSH into all of your switches, firewalls, everything covered under MNET. Um, you know, dump their ARP tables, dump the MAC address tables, dump their route tables, and dynamically find assets via a discovery, which I'll show you. With that, it builds Visios dynamically. And they're always up to date because, um, you know, it's scanning the network between five and 15 minutes. Um, so you know, it's always up to date. It's not, hey, we deployed something and now we need to go update all the documentation. It's, hey, we deployed something. And within 15 minutes at the most, we're going to know about it. We're going to query it. We're going to know what interfaces it has, its firmware version, its make and model, and where it fits in the network topology. So uh, you know, enables us to support you much better. Uh, additionally, as part of this, we're giving access to this tool just included in MNET to all of our MNET clients. So um, that's the main reason that we wanted to show you this exciting tool, um, kind of show you how it would sit in your environments, um, and then kind of give you information how to um, interface with us to get your accounts and get you set up um, on it. So with that, let me demo of it. All right, so uh, as any software uh, nowadays, this is consumed um, in a hosted fashion, right? So as you can see my URL here, you know, I am at avic.com um, URL. So as I mentioned, the Avic collector is um, the piece that kind of connects your network infrastructure into the Avic dashboard. Uh, in our environment, we did deploy this as an OVA on our vSphere infrastructure. Um, but as you all know, in our MNET clients, we don't like to mix our monitoring tools with your server infrastructure, just in case uh, there's any collateral damage of your server infrastructure going down. Um, we don't want that to uh, affect our, our network monitoring piece. So um, again, the Ava collector has always already been deployed in your environments um, to enable us to start monitoring again, um, PRTG uh, along with, with Avic, uh, with again, deprecating PRTG probably in the next week or so. And then uh, the heart of Avic again is this discovery and this scanning piece. So um, we've gone in and you know the network subnets that we know about that have network infrastructure, uh, AKA all the IP addresses and, and subnets that, that we were um, currently monitoring infrastructure on PRTG, we then added into Avic. So as you can see here, um, this is our network, uh, by the way, of course, I'm not gonna show any of your infrastructures. Uh, that is for uh, your eyes only and our technicians. So here you can see our several subnets. So again, um, we have quite a bit of segmentation here. Our servers are in one subnet, our corporate Wi-Fi is another, our workstations another, DMZ, switch management, client VPN, so on and so forth. So um, you know, currently we have the Avic collector just monitoring the few subnets that have assets that we care about, right? Being your firewalls, your switches, uh, wireless controllers, access points, things of that nature. So here we can see, you know, yes, it's set to scan. Um, you can have multiple collectors in the environment. Again, all of your environments, you have um, either layer two or layer three connectivity to all your assets. So we're just utilizing that existing connectivity. Uh, for some reason, it had disparate networks. We would need a collector on each one if there's no connectivity between them. And then all of these subnets that we're not monitoring are subnets that Avic found. Uh, again, it found via querying our switches and firewalls and our uh, VMware infrastructure, right? Dumping all the route tables and finding all the associated subnets. So um, again, in many environments, you probably have a lot of subnets that are currently not being scanned uh, because um, again, from our point of view, you know, nothing that we're supporting, but uh, again, as part of you all having access to this, you'll easily be able to come in see those subnets and come in and, you know, set those to scan if there are assets in there that you care about. Uh, through the demo, I'll articulate why you would want to scan and, and what benefit that has. But um, again, when we um, give you logins, if you uh, guys so desire, you know, you'll be able to come in and, and set up that scanning. Uh, of course, Avic does need to know how to query your devices. So um, again, generally for most of your environments, we have the SNMP credentials as we're monitoring your firewalls and switches. So we would have gone in and already set those up. Um, again, that gives us that kind of counter-based and uh, CPU and RAM and, and all that of the network infrastructure. So again, fairly similar to our previous monitoring solution. The big difference is the Avic has a capability to SSH and Telnet and understand the configs. 
Um, for any of your devices where applicable, we were doing that previously. There are uh, another product uh, logging in and backing up the configs. Uh, but our monitoring piece and our config backups were disparate systems. And our config backup was just that, right? SSH in, grab the config, um, you know, back it up um, to where we could do change management and things of that nature. But yeah, we had no tools that would really understand those configs and maybe point out misconfigurations or utilize those configs um, to, you know, build, dynamically build a map and uh, again, dump ARP tables and MAC address tables. So that's one of the, the, the big differences um, why we moved to Avic was having a monitoring tool that was also network infrastructure aware. And uh, again, expect those to be set up in, in your environments. Um, again, if you have devices that we don't manage, UPSs and uh, printers and um, any, anything else in your environment that's really not covered at MNET, you're more than welcome to come in and, and add any credentials for those uh, to where you'll see here through the demo that uh, Avic's aware of a ton of different types of equipment and um, you know, can utilize those credentials to, um, uh, again, uh, dump the assets uh, of them. Another really cool thing about Avic is that it's also able to query uh, any Windows servers or desktops via WMI or the Windows management interface. Uh, with that, we get some basic you know, server monitoring, basic client monitoring. Um, really, the point of it, though, is to uh, really query the clients, grab their MAC address, and so I can place them on a map. Right at the end of the day, that's really the goal of this: is hey, dump all these you know MAC addresses, and um, you know let us know via uh, you know where they are in the actual network infrastructure. So uh, obviously, not something that we would have done. We do not manage any of your Windows assets. We do not have service accounts uh, in any of your Active Directories. So that would be on you to to come in and and set that up if that is something that, that you desire to, to monitor. Um, and it was also vSphere aware, right? So, um, you know, kind of show you what we're able to, to dump out of vSphere. Um, it's able to know, you know, hey, this is a physical Windows box. Um, this is a virtual you know, Linux box and everything on, on vSphere. Uh, API credentials. Um, I know many of you on here um, are consumers of our favorite network infrastructure uh, for, um, you know, APs and, and switches and firewalls being Cisco Meraki. Well, uh, I showed you this SSH thing, which you know none of your equipment has. So uh, Avic, uh, of course, being very important to us, is monitoring that, that network, um, that Meraki environment. So it's able to query the, the Meraki dashboard and gather a lot of that information that would traditionally be found via an SSH or a Telnet or you know some kind of CLI interaction um, with the equipment. So um, for most of you, if we have API access, um, that's probably already been done. Um, so again, we'll have to take that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it is also aware of, um, oh shoot, the name's eluding me, a few different pieces of backup software. Um, so there are other um, things outside of Meraki that it can also interface um, via, via APIs. Um, like I said, uh, good chance that we've already added the network, so you'll probably want to do additionals, again, put in their credentials. And then the discovery settings are probably left the defaults, which we find have been just fine in all of our testing. Uh, but you know, you know, there's configurations of uh, different ways of how you want to interact with SMP and SSH and, and Telnet and um, our, our timings and, and all that good stuff in terms of that discovery process. So to recap, we've already deployed the collector environment. Uh, we've set up the discovery for the few subnets that we care about. We've entered the credentials for the few assets that we care about. Um, which again, uh, I hope the, by the end of this demo, you see this is a really powerful tool and uh, you'll want to use it for your own internal monitoring too. Again, uh, they'll provide it free as part of that MNET offering, or I should say included in. All right, so uh, I'm going to kind of go down the left-hand side. I know you all see this really awesome network map in the middle. You want me to click around on, which I promise you I will, um, but touching kind of on the, the overall dashboard and overall health. Um, first, we'll see device usage, right? So this is going to be uh, throughput across uh, your different network devices. And again, this can be anything that Avic can query. So maybe you have a single host that, that is going crazy or cameras or um, you know, DVR, you know, whatever that looks like in your environment, right? So uh, typically we call this kind of a top talkers report, right? These are the, the top people um, you know, uh, that have traffic on our network. And no surprise in our environment, you know, we can see here over the last 12 hours that our iSCSI infrastructure has been the top talkers, right? Um, these are the, the two switches, the A and B side of our uh, iSCSI infrastructure for our VMware um, cluster. Next is a, a few of our VMware hosts, and then onto our core switches and internet breakout switch. 
Um, again, you can look at this over uh, different time spans. Um, you'll notice on all these screens that generally all this is going to be um, you know, based on a, a certain time range. And the alerts. Uh, obviously, the, the heart and soul of a monitoring tool is actually opening alerts, right? So as you see, there's a lot of different alert levels that uh, we'd react on differently, right? So uh, I'll show you a lot of the alerts. There's 59, uh, 58 out of the box. And it's very easy to add alerts that are applicable for all of your environments. Uh, of course, we have information all, all the way up to, you know, something's probably melting down in the server room and, and you should address it. Um, again, we are VMware aware, which I will touch on once we hit the map. Um, VMware as in um, knowing the health of the, the hosts and the VMs running on them. Network elements. This is really going to be your network infrastructure, right? Fire, firewalls, switches, um, any wireless controllers. And of course, having those all online is our job to keep track of. Uh, but again, you know, Avic would alert if anything does go offline. Then misconfigurations. This is one of the really powerful pieces, right? Um, so our, our environment, we're the network folks, uh, you know, found 88 uh, misconfigurations. Uh, as you can see, these are all informational. I'm not clear these are purpose for demo purposes, because uh, every time I look at that, I'm like, oh, 88, I should go in and, and fix that. Um, but the cool thing is that, um, you know, these kind of show potential VLAN shrunk misconfigurations. Um, as you all know, we uh, have been a short tail MITEL dealer for a long time, and how the short tail worked was having all my ports as a trunk port. Um, and then the, the phones would hop via DHCP scope option. Well, in that, uh, we're obviously a Ring Central now, and we don't have IP phones. So arguably, all these should be access ports, right? That could potentially be a security issue uh, if someone could plug into a port and, and VLAN hop um, potentially somewhere that, that they shouldn't be. I think we have VLAN pruning on, so don't worry about our security guys, but um, kind of a good example of, hey, you know, this thing's a trunk port, and Avic says, hey, but I only see VLAN 1, right? Or I only see VLAN 90. I don't see other devices on other VLANs, right? Because I'm a device aware, I'm configuration aware. So um, other things that might show up here is if you have scanning tree loops, right? Hey, we see this port's unblocking. Um, maybe you've designed the environment that way. I know we have a, a least fun client on here. Um, I saw join that we helped design, um, you know, loops in the network for redundancy, but um, more than that, that's probably not desired, right? And um, there could be you know, VLAN misconfigurations on either side, right? Something's a trunk or an access or different. So there, there's a, a ton of different um, misconfigurations, quote unquote, that um, Avic is able to um, detect on a, a whole myriad of devices. And that right there, again, was one of the really big reasons we, we went to Avic. Uh, device utilization. So you can see uh, this is my workstation. I'm sitting here working hard. Uh, I'm doing this awesome demo. Um, again, via WMI, we are monitoring all the workstations and clients on our network. So uh, you know, CPU, RAM, storage. Uh, again, if we had network infrastructure, in fact, here we have an old HP switch I put up on the bench specifically for demoing, which I'll show you guys. Um, you know, it's showing up on the list because it has high memory. So um, again, I know several of you calls have FortiGates or uh, Dell switches or, or Meraki or whatever that looks like. Um, again, we're able to, to roll that all into this dashboard. Um, we're also able to do um, you know, internet monitoring. Um, I think all of you have an SD-WAN appliance. So, um, you know, this would be potentially monitoring the SUN appliance, which of course your uptime will, will be great. Um, we'd also get some, you know, basic bandwidth graphs. And then for a whole myriad of different firewalls, um, we're able to, you know, see the SSL clients. The really nice thing is this gives them some historical reporting on the SSL VPNs too. Um, a lot of, you know, uh, if you want to go check how many people are on your VPN, often that's point in time. To like, oh, hey, how many people actually use the VPN, or how long have they been on the VPN, or just more statistics about uh, your VPN usage, which is often lacking in uh, most firewall solutions. So again, a uh, nice little kind of overall um, dashboard or, or health of your network. Um, I know several of you are multi-location. I'm showing the map how that works, but um, again, this would show up uh, uh, this information across all of your infrastructure. So first, we get an inventory. Um, again, this is all the networks that Offic has found. Uh, we do not have 75 networks, but um, in terms of our switching infrastructure, but in our VMware infrastructure, we have a whole bunch of you know, virtual networks. And because it's able to log in and dump the route tables of that infrastructure, that all shows up. I happen to have Hyper-V in my desktop. Um, so there's a bunch more VLANs that, that, or subnets, I should say, that showed up, right? So um, again, it even dumped the route tables for my Windows desktop. Um, to, to find anywhere that you might have a subnet. And then it's easy to come in and, and you know, search, um, you know, show me the ones I'm not scanning or um, you know, these ones are, are routed, they're gonna be layer three somewhere or these ones might just be VLAN tags, right? 
And then I'm able to see the, the devices per uh, that, that I was able to scan, right? So here we have 45 servers and, and 10 clients. So really just kind of give you a grasp of all the subnets routed or um, in VLANs um, across your infrastructure. Access devices. So again, this is going to be any asset that via that audit discovery, the AVIC is located. And as we can see, AVIC knows about a lot of different types of devices, right? Um, knows about our um, some of our SANs, right? Our network storage, um, our servers, of course, the, the collector itself. Um, we have a bunch of unknowns. These are things that we haven't given the credentials to, or the credentials we've given it are not able to access the device. So of course, it's an IP scanner, so it found them via IP. Uh, but it was unable to log in with those credentials and, and give us you know, meaningful information. Um, here again, uh, you know, Cisco Meraki camera, um, JetDirect, you know, printers, uh, again, domain controllers, uh, QSAR printer, uh, again, Windows servers, and we have that differentiation of you know, uh, you know, virtual and, and all that. So again, there's a, a ton of different types of um, you know, network infrastructure assets um, that AVIC is able to um, to get logged in, given credentials. Uh, all the interfaces, so um, get in your environment, these would be all the interfaces across your switches, um, again, workstations, uh, really any interface on the network. Um, you know, here's happens to be a Wi Fi 6 card on uh, Kyle Holmes's uh, Surface, um, you know, uh, book that is set on our network. And all these screens, you'll see it's easy to come in. And you know, if I don't want to see, you know, Kyle's. Uh, interfaces, I'm able to type in, you know, a host name here or any of these fields. I'm able to put a question mark. And it makes it easy for me to drill down and, you know, just show me all my uh, virtual mix, right, on, on my VMware infrastructure. So uh, all these search fields, I'm not necessarily drilling down on them, but they're all very powerful in terms of finding, um, you know, what's here, right? I can look at, you know, my up-down status and, and all that. In addition to an IP scanner, it's also a port scanner. So again, we're scanning these subnets, looking for devices, uh, assuming they no longer have IP addresses on the network. But wouldn't it also be great to be notified if uh, services went down, right? Um, so here's our, our two domain controllers. Um, all of you that have to carry and feed for your Active Directory know that if DNS is down, things get uh, real cranky. Hopefully, you haven't static, you know, a DNS server somewhere, or maybe put both in. But uh, ideally, I want these both up, right? So it's easy to create an alert saying, hey, you know, any DNS servers that go offline, you know, send me an alert. Um, I like it for that use case, but I also kind of like, you know, that shadow IT or, or, you know, things that are spun up maybe I don't know about or things that are still in my infrastructure that I thought maybe it had been, um, you know, deprecated, right? So um, you know, I was a little surprised to see, you know, nine RDP servers in our environment. Um, these are all legitimate, but in my mind, like, well, we have, you know, one RDP or we should have two um, with the RDP gateway, but I'm like, oh, yeah, we still have RDP and enabled all of these. Um, so uh, these services, uh, again, I didn't monitor a lot of them. A lot of them are not uh, applicable for our environments, but you can easily come in and monitor those. Or it's also very easy to come in and, and add your own, um, you know, port check if there are uh, non-standard ports that aren't in that pre can list that might be important for your environment. Uh, cloud controllers, again, this is our, our Meraki. Um, so we used uh, Brian's here. I think many of you probably are familiar with Brian. We used his API key, um, which you know, does show up on the, on the dashboard here. So we can get a lot of that information that we about the infrastructure that we traditionally would get via you know, more uh, SSH. Alerts, uh, of course, that's why we're deploying this, is we uh, you know, be able to take action on any alerts in the environment. So um, apparently our internet went down at some point. Um, so if I come back, I know there's a, a lot of alerts that we kind of generated, um, you know, network elements offline. Uh, this is actually me pulling this. So there's the notion of, you know, as an active um, and um, if alert does trigger, it will be active. And then if it resolves itself, it will be dismissed, right? So it's not one of those like, hey, it just opens a bunch of alerts. And then if things go back to normal, a lot of monitoring, monitoring solutions, especially if you're opening tickets somewhere, might not go back and close the ticket or acknowledge that something um, had gone um, back online or, or back into that normal state that, that we're used to. As far as alerts, as I mentioned, you know, there's a bunch of alerts out of the box at these different kind of severity levels. Um, so as you can see, you know, emergency, critical, warning, 
right? Um, you might want to set a certain amount of SSL VPN sessions, and you just know, hey, if we go over 30, that we might have bad performance. And wouldn't it be great if we could be alerted on that type of information, right? Uh, maybe your UPS uh, is trying to alert you, but whatever mechanism, uh, if you had the old parachute server, if you guys ever had a, um, how to deploy those in your environment, um, a lot of that we can get through uh, um, SNMP, right? And if you really want to make your printers, uh, that is also something Avic can tell you. you know, the really cool about Avic is that it's they've went and loaded those SNMP MIBs. You know, if you guys ever worked with SNMP-based monitoring software, um, and it's an open standard, but all their vendors have their own MIBs, um, which is essentially a dictionary of how to read their special set of SNMP counters. So you'll see a lot of things in here that, um, again, we could have alerted via PRTG if we want to tell you about your printers, but we wouldn't have had all the MIBs for the device in your environment and probably kind of um, alerted on that detail. As you see, there is a bunch of canned alerts, but there are probably good things in your environment that are important to you. So you might come in and um, say, you know, I want to look at, you know, my, my servers. Um, all my servers are very important to me. So I feel like it's probably an emergency if, you know, any of their CPU, CPU utilization um, goes over 80%, right? Or, um, you know, if they go offline. Or you probably don't want to do all your servers, right? Um, you might just come in and say, hey, I just want to, you know, do this um, specific. So this went over to main controllers. And um, again, there's a bunch of configurations here around those alerts. There's also a notion of a notification channel. So uh, of course you can email yourself, but if you've ever been on the receiving end of just way too many emails, it's hard to, to action on. Also not uncommon to email the IT group. Well, oftentimes there's no accountability, right? Hey, are you taking care of the alert? Hey, are you taking care of the alert? So um, we can also alert into Microsoft Teams, uh, which we do for some of our alerts. You can alert into a Slack channel. And there are several CRM integrations. Um, another reason we chose Avic is that uh, we happen to use ConnectWise for our CRM to keep track of all um, support tickets and customer information. And this has tight integration into that. Um, I kind of had to uh, write some uh, integration from PRTG into uh, ConnectWise previously. So um, in the move of this, we also made our alerts um, a lot cleaner into ConnectWise in terms of being able to monitor all of your assets and your network health. And uh, while I'm in alerts, yes, there's a maintenance window. Um, we had so many alerts, I didn't drill down to one, but a lot of them were uh, interface utilization, right? Um, out of the box, if you go over 80% of a um, network interface utilization for five minutes, you get an alert, right? That could be an uplink port that's being saturated and giving a really poor performance to your end users or servers. And uh, we do VMware Veeam backups every night at 2 a.m. And sure enough, Veeam, what the Veeam wants to do, and it absolutely saturated the, some of the um, ESXi uh, ports or the ports going to our, our VMware infrastructure to one of our SANs. That's totally normal. That's what we wanted to do, but it was alerting. So I went and put a maintenance window and said, hey, from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. on that specific port, right? I want to know about other saturations, but don't send me an alert. So also easy to try and avoid false positives uh, when we come to alerting. Documentation. So every asset on the map can have a note. So here happens to be my workstation. I gave it a title. Um, you can give it a, a you know, actual detail. So um, communicated, don't mess with the network port, uh, plugged into to my desktop here. Um, and there's a little bit of a change, right? Who edited it last? You know, um, you know, is this stale information? Is it up-to-date information? In addition to having notes, um, there are a bunch of reports. As I mentioned, if you want to report about uh, you know, your printers, your UPSs, VPN, et cetera, um, we do have that, that capability. And then configurations. Um, again, many of you do have um, equipment that has SSH uh, and or Telnet capability. So Avic is able to log in and back up that configuration. Out of the box, part of that discovery piece I showed you is Avic actually will maintain a session to your equipment, meaning it'll SSH in your 48 and it'll just sit there and it'll keep looking for changes. So it's not like, hey, Jeremy, how often are you backing up our configs? But well, previously we were backing up daily, right? We back them up, um, I think at midnight it was. This, if you make rapid changes, it'll actually back those all up, um, knowing that again, it, it maintains that tunnel, right? Uh, again, you can disable that if that is not functionality you'd like in your environment, but out of the box, it's not a, hey, how often are you backing up? It's like, hey, I'm backing up all the time um, to give you change management. 
Um, debug, this is a, a little more of a, um, you know, if your hardware is, is providing temperature sensors, you can surface that by hardware sensors. Um, all the routes, again, these are all the, the route tables um, that get dumped. So this is the device and these are the, the, the actual routes associated with them, right? So you have static routes in your environment, default routes, um, it'll dump all those route tables. Uh, audit log, this is just for Avic itself. So if anybody comes and makes changes, uh, again, we are giving you access to it. Uh, if something mysteriously breaks, we're able to go to the audit log and uh, see what mysteriously caused that, right? Was that uh, you or us? And then um, obviously take action to, to fix that. Um, traffic insights and syslog, I will touch on at the end of this. Those are uh, features of Avic. They're not part of the base Avic license that we're extending to you folks um, and part of your MNET. So um, that is NetFlow and the ability to consume syslogs. So um, pretty cool stuff there. But again, that is a little bit of add on, and I'll, I'll touch on that as I wrap up. Deep breath, Jeremy. OK, so now the cool part, right, the map. So um, as you, most of you would know, uh, we are a Meraki shop, which uh, you know aren't traditional gear in terms of SSHing in. And there's a few things with the map that with Meraki uh, don't quite line up. I'll, I'll touch on those. Uh, all of you on this call that have that more traditional uh, you know, 40 gate firewall or sonic wall or whatever, and Dell switches or HP switches. Um, Aruba switches, um, you know, it'll show a, a little more of that kind of traditional, a little bit around stacking and some other things, you know, I'll touch on. So here at the top of the map, we have the, the almighty internet, um, you know, hanging off that internet. Um, we do have some kind of, you know, breakout subnets that show up, but then also, again, our, our Meraki key, right, which connects over the internet, um, grabs workstations and um, grabs a, a, a lot of our network infrastructure in terms of shell numbers, MAC addresses, et cetera. And the first stop on our internet here is our Meraki MX250 firewall, right? So Avic, um, and again, I should say nothing on the map asset-wise has been touched by us in terms of any edits or updates. So this is all just purely what Avic was able to grab. So yes, it's a firewall, ha has a bunch of IP addresses. Uh, no surprise if you those are public since these are public um, you know, firewalls. Serial number, you know, what networks are um, associated with VLANs, uh, you know, a description of it. Uh, again, one piece of that Meraki is it doesn't quite grab the software. And if you have more traditional network equipment um, that we can do a show version on, right, via that SSH interface, um, you know, it would populate that information. Uh, you know, is it up, down? Uh, how many interfaces are connected? How I'm pulling it, right? So. Uh, I'm getting it through SNMP, uh, then traditionally that, that cloud piece. And then um, we only have the, the WAN interface and LAN interface connected on ours. So uh, here you can see the utilization and then um, you know, very granular bandwidth. Uh, that is sometimes frustrating on Meraki for any Meraki folks in the audience that uh, sometimes I feel like I can't get quite the granular information I want to, right? Uh, and it's there, it's great. Um, but oftentimes uh, I find it mildly lacking, uh, especially for specific timeframes, right? Um, I'm able to come in and, and, and um, set, hey, I actually want to look at this day, not just a day back or a week back. So uh, like I said, you'll definitely see some overlap of Meraki, but we find this um, has quite a bit more detail than um, the Meraki dashboard does out of the box. So on this map, any blue line is a physical connection. Any gray line is a, a layer three. Um, connection. So if I look at my firewall, there's a nice little blue line. This is one of my, my core switches. So if I click on this guy, uh, I can see port one on my MX250 is connected to port 24 um, on my core switch. I can see that, um, you know, it's MAC address interfaces. You know, um, I can see, yes, some gigabit. And I can see from my firewall down on my switch that I am using like a transit VLAN of 90, right? And I can see the associated um, network speed. So uh, if I follow this guy down into one of my access switches here, um, you know, if I click on this physical guy, you can see port 23 on my Meraki core switch. It's going to port 48 on my access switch. Uh, I can see that those are actually using a VLAN 1 as their management VLAN and associated speeds. Um, we do actually have physical stack switches. So one, two, and three here. And if we had traditional infrastructure, it would nice be a nice little stack. Uh, the Avic dev team is telling me that they're writing to the API to get that stack. Uh, but again, if any, any of you have the traditional, again, Arubas or uh, Cisco Catalyst or Dells, uh, maybe you have a stack, those would show up appropriately. 
Uh, we can see, of course, that you know all my course switches though um, is the VLAN they all share uh, towards the that transit VLAN, right? Because all of them have that transit VLAN set up. So if I look at uh, again my access switch here, just kind of show you more information. Yes, you know it is a switch. Here's the IP. You know here's its shell number, its uptime, uh, how many devices or interfaces are online, its bandwidth, right? Its top interfaces, um, you know packets per second. Um, many of us always have so much focus on actual bandwidth through the device, but that's only you know oftentimes part of the picture. Um, other cool things we can do is we can actually look at you know. Hey, for those packets for a second, how many of those are broadcast, right? Um, how many of those are multicast? How many of those are unicast? So um, a lot of information that Meraki actually doesn't even provide um, in their dashboard. So you know, I can come in and um, well, I can come in and see what networks. So um, again, I know this is an access switch. So I know these are just gonna be um, untagged um, or trunk ports that allowing certain VLANs through. And I can come in the interfaces. So um, again, I can see you know, what's administratively up, what's actually up being a cable plugged into it, and its name, the MAC address of the port, and what it's connected to. So again, that's on our access switch. Uh, as I drill down, you'll see access points. So yes, uh, notice we have a Meraki access points. These blue lines are wireless clients. So again, a physical blue line, means wire, this dotted blue line would be wireless. Um, we also know that our cameras are plugged in to our access switch. Uh, again, we didn't tell it that we have Meraki cameras or anything like that. Um, it fully detected that on itself. Here I can see I am physically connected to our access switch. So that's my own workstation. And here's all my IP addresses. Again, I do have Hyper-V installed, so I have a whole lot of those. Um, I do shut down my PC at night. We are very green here at Matrix Networks and do not leave uh, all our equipment running at night. So um, you can see that um, you know, when I was uh, up and down. And my uptime, uh, because I don't hate booting every day since I shut down, I do hybrid in my PC. So here you can see that, yes, I have an update up, uh, time of 26 days, even though I do shut off my PC at night. You know, my physical interfaces, or not physical, all my interfaces in Windows, um, again, you can see, yes, I do as a Dell XPS here. Yes, I'm running Windows 10 Pro. Here's my bandwidth, uh, again, my physical interfaces, and my device utilization. Let's make this a little more interesting. So if I look at the last week here. Oh, all right, should have been more interesting. Um, so I can see you know, my CPU, my RAM, and my storage, right? So uh, again, I am getting that via WMI. No, this is a not a endpoint or workstation monitoring tool. But again, um, to get a lot of this information in terms of its bandwidth and its MAC address, again, I do use that WMI to gather that information. So again, I can come into my interfaces on my machine. Yes, I have a lot of Hyper-V here. And I can see here's my physical NIC. It is plugged into port six on this Meraki switch. And as an example, you could go in the Meraki dashboard and see this. But again, all of you with traditional infrastructure don't have an awesome Meraki dashboard too. Um, this is probably a lot of insight that you do not have today. Um, we can also see that, yes, my fancy Dell has a wireless adapter, and I do have WireGuard um, also installed for uh, VPN tunnels. So uh, again, any physical interfaces is going to be um, shown on here. Uh, other things we can see on the map, again, printers. Um, I don't know how many of you have um, you know, printers being an important part of your infrastructure. A lot of our clients do do retail, right? Having an invoice printer, having the, the, the ticket printer, having the, the credit card printer um, are important to them. So uh, being able to learn on that in those environments is applicable. Uh, however, if you just want to know how much magenta you still have left, um, you know, we're able to tell you that too. And if you are concerned about your magenta, you can set up an alert to send um, on that. So again, the HPs uh, detect that. And then again, we'd have a, a Kyocera um, that, uh, that's not magenta, that's kind of boring. So uh, if I move on here, again, we have a bunch of workstations. Um, this thing does know about um, things like, you know, Dell Drax. Um, it does know about, again, here's our VMware hosts. So here's one of our hosts, right? It knows it's a hypervisor. It knows it's uptime. Um, it knows, you know, hey, I have a bunch of VMs associated to it, right? I can drill down. Here's one of those RDP servers that we talked about. Um, here I can see, yes, it's VMware. Yes, your sound server 2012 R2, don't give me a hard time. Um, here's our uptime, good bandwidth, 
its virtual NAG packets per second, um, so on and so forth. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are other devices that it, that it knows about. Um, again, here's the um, actual DRAC, right? The, the Dell management interface. And um, you'll see some sad, sad people sitting over here that aren't on the map. These happen to be offline devices. So these are devices that we did find at one point in time, and for whatever reason are, are offline at this point. Um, we actually did have one of our VMware hosts fail last week. So uh, just sitting over here sad by itself. Uh, that is why you have three um, to where uh, the other two were able to, to pick up the slack. So, um, you know, yes, it's fun to click around on here and, and there's more to see, but, um, you know, in reality, you're not probably coming and drilling down and zooming in and all that, right? Um, this search field is really kind of what you're looking for. So uh, you can imagine that, you know, someone um, calls the help desk or we have an asset you're looking for and I can come in here. And again, if I, you know, I'm looking for, for my workstation, oh, that'd be Kyle, um, you know, I can click boom, right? And it should be a nice little blue dot on the map and, and here I am. Um, so it makes it very easy to find devices. Again, if you know IP addresses of anything, if you know a Mac address of anything, um, it's very easy to come in here and, and you know, locate them. Um, you know, hey, just show me all my clients on my, my guest subnet. Um, and obviously this, you know, view maybe isn't uh, as helpful as it could be, so I can actually filter down to that, right? So here's all, all my workstations and how they're connected to my environment. You might say, hey, you know, what, what servers do we actually have, right? Uh, again, you might have too many cooks in the kitchen, as I say, and uh, you might say, hey, you know, wh where are all my, oh, sorry, I'm gonna remove the filter for that. Um, again, I can do that question mark and device type and come in and, you know, hey, I wanna look at all my servers again. View might not be helpful, but here they all are. So um, really the point of this is again, because we're scanning so frequently that within minutes of adding an asset, uh, again, printer, AP, camera, uh, any endpoints on your network, they immediately become discoverable um, in AVIC. So uh, again, for those of you that are kind of those traditional environments that don't have that magic of Meraki, this adds a ton of that infrastructure or something that uh, analytics in, and, and again, um, even for your Meraki folks, you can see the power that um, this just has a lot more asset information, Meraki being more of a passive to where again, this is, is active. Uh, as I did mention, I did uh, grab a really old trusty HP switch out of the back room, just to be able to demo what it does look like for devices that have a, um, have a, a SSH or Telnet interface. So here I can see a core switch. Um, this happens to be a, a literally a switch on our, our workbench where we um, often um, will load up and test and program any devices for you folks. Um, and here, again, we have our HP switch hanging off. So here's the model. Um, again, if you Google this, you'll see, yes, it is indeed ancient. I'm not, not lying here. Um, again, it's software version, it's firmware version. And then again, if I come in that documentation piece, um, you know, I only made a few config changes because this is um, you know, just a, something I threw up on the bench, but you'd see all your configurations here and it's easy to come in and say, hey, I wanna you know, compare, right? So this is my current config or probably I'm running config more specifically. And I would compare it to an older config. And here I can see that you know previously I did have interface 47 and labeled as test, and I can see that that's been removed. All right, so it makes that config you know change uh, very easy. And as I mentioned, you know where you previously were doing that uh, more for our own edification at, at midnight to back that up for you folks, but it wasn't uh, exposed to many of you um, unless there was a request for it. To where here uh, again, I know many of you on the call have 40 gates and in traditional infrastructure. To where this becomes really awesome uh, in terms of that capability to, to have the configs. Uh, another really cool part of AVIC is that that AVIC collector can act as a reverse proxy. By that, I mean, if I'm off the reservation and I have no connect to my network, but I really need to get into this old crusty HP switch, um, I'm able to come in and say, hey, AVIC, can you present me a terminal, right? So it knows that this device has SSH on it. Of course, during a demo, um, Long random password, if any of you guys are wondering there. So um, it's actually now reaching out through the AVA collector, which again is an in VMware infrastructure, but would be in your um, hardware device um, deployed as part of MNET, um, to where uh, you know makes it extremely easy for us to get in um, and make any changes. So uh, again, something happens in the middle of the night, and then one of our technicians is at home, not to fumble around for VPN clients or whatever. 
they're able to come in and um, you know access that infrastructure uh, again from their house. Um, one really cool thing I like about the Meraki side is that, um, as I mentioned, there is no um, SSH interface, but there is a web interface that's done for management and troubleshooting. And you can only access that on the LAN, right? So um, if I do need to come in and you know set a, a network switch port to a 100 megabit full duplex, and uh, for whatever reason, I, I can't do that via the, the dashboard, um, I can easily come in and, and make that change here, right? So um, if for some reason a piece of market gears goes offline, a uh, really cool about Avic is it does allow you to get to these local status pages even when you're not locally on the network. And lastly, it can just create a tunnel for you. If any of you are familiar with like an SSH tunnel, um, this gives you that type of functionality, right? So there's a small client that gets downloaded on, on your device. Um, and say, uh, pretend this was my workstation and I wanted to access it. You know, I can say, hey, I want to go to 3389, right, on this device, be it in my workstation, I use an imagination here, and I want to spin up local port 8080. This would actually, if I connect to download that agent and set up this tunnel for me, and I can actually RDP to 8080 in my local host, right, or, or good old 127.001, and it would utilize the collector to make a tunnel into your infrastructure. So um, again, kind of a, a, a cool piece of that here. Um, a few other things I'll touch on uh, just occurred to me that I did manage to skip over um, the hardware lifecycle. I, I apologize for that. Um, currently, what I'm about to show you is Cisco only. Uh, should be on the, the roadmap here shortly for other devices. So um, if we had Cisco traditional, uh, if I had um, you know, Catalyst switches or Cisco ISRs, which I know many of you do, it actually show me my make and model and um, suggested Cisco firmware version. So it makes it easy to try and um, you know, stay up to, to speed, which again, enables us to make sure that you're um, where you should be on the firmware side. And then lifecycle information, right? Um, oftentimes, I don't know how many subscribe to the end of sale and end of life announcements from the, the myriad of vendors that you have in your environment. Um, but again, for Cisco at this point, others in the future, uh, we do have two Wi-Fi 5, uh, right? A211 AC access points in our environment that Meraki has set as end of sale. So um, again, it does surface that information here. This makes it easy to stay on top of things. And then again, if you have SmartNet, um, it's able to pull SmartNet contracts too. So not only can it tell you your firmware version and your hardware lifecycle, but additionally, if you have any current SmartNet on your device. So that's it for the, the guts of um, the, the AVIC um, in terms of, again, I hope we made it clear of kind of what we've set up. Um, what you have access to in terms of setting up um, uh, all the alerting your environment for again UPSs or printers or EPs or uh, again anything that's not explicitly covered by us or managed by us. So other cool things that Audit can do is it can act as a NetFlow collector. So virtually every file on the market can send NetFlow. Uh, if you're not familiar, NetFlow is the notion of taking all the IP packet headers. It's not the payload, right? Just IP header, the source and destination. Um, and sending that off to a collector. So um, as I mentioned, everything I've shown you up to this point is just yours and part of Mnet. Thank you for being a, a client of ours. Um, if this interests you, this could be an add-on license that you can talk to your uh, Matrix Networks account executive about. So um, I just have the one device in our environment, uh, our one firewall um, that is you know, forwarding this NetFlow information. So I can launch this NetFlow dashboard. I might say, Jeremy, you sold me Meraki and, and you show me Meraki is awesome and it gives me a ton of information. Um, again, as a network guy for almost two decades, Meraki does give you a ton of information and you don't get out of traditional firewalls. But the granularity occasionally leaves me wanting more. So um, NetFlow is the actual real raw data that Meraki kind of you know, prettifies and throws up into the dashboard. So here I can see you know, a certain date range of what I want to do. Um, I can come in and easily you know, filter down if I know exactly what I'm looking for. But for this, I'm kind of just showing you the highlights, right? So uh, over the last day, it kind of shows me you know, what applications I had um, via this nice little bar, pie chart, little bar, bar chart, um, and then you know, an actual kind of overall uh, bandwidth of my applications, right? So like, oh, VoIP, OK, let me, let me drill down into that. So now you can see I've added a filter for VoIP. And here, you know, some SIP traffic. Uh, I think we still have SIP trunks coming into our, our short-term environment. 
Zoom traffic, Ring Central traffic, WebEx traffic, MGCP. Uh, for these that know uh, Shortel, that was the old uh, 200 series handset protocol for, for Shortel, right? So um, you might come in and be like, Zoom, who? Who's using Zoom, right? That's maybe not a application or network, right? It's maybe one of those shadow IT things that someone went rogue in your organization and just started using Zoom. So now I've kind of selected Zoom. Um, all of these become applicable to this filter. So no surprise here, a lot of UDP. Yeah, yeah, that's what we accept, expect. And then top, right? So these are my, my top sources. Um, funny story, I am doing a Zoom webinar right now and, and I'm on the top of the list. So um, I guess no huge surprise there, uh, right? And Zoom is talking back to me. And Kyle's sitting here with no video on. So naturally he shows up on the list too, right? So um, again, for those of you that do Amaraki, I think you'll already notice that this is a lot more powerful than kind of what you get in the dashboard in terms of that information. Um, or a little easier to surface, let's leave it at that. Uh, top destinations, top conversations, right? So this is actually, um, you know, not just source and destination. It's actual, you know, me talking to Zoom, um, Zoom, um, and me talking to Zoom, and Zoom talking to me. So again, as you'd expect, right? And what port numbers we're, we're using. Um, I can then remove this filter, and again, this is just going to be all the um, top talkers on my environment, right? So uh, here I am. Here Kyle is. Um, full disclosure, we're in the office. So uh, yes, we are the top talkers. Uh, you know, destinations, ports, and then conversations, right? Um, so here I can see Cal talking IP address, IP address, um, so on and so forth. Um, geolocation, this does take all this flow information and surface it um, in terms of, you know, sources um, of, of all the information, um, all the conversations, today, and then destinations for all the conversations. Uh, no surprise here, our mass consumption is, you know, based in the, in the US. And then flows. So this is actually the raw, raw flow information. So, you know, here's the source 443 to this destination on this port um, with this many packets, this many, or sorry, this many bytes, this many packets, and then one application um, we're expecting to see, right? So, um, you know, obviously for our Meraki folks out there, um, they do not in any fashion expose the, the raw flow information, um, more just that the, um, more than the application right? that layer seven. So um, again, depending on, on your environment, this could be extremely helpful um, in terms of tracking down um, potentially rogue assets on the network. And then finally, a syslog. So uh, you know, this would be all the log information sent from your devices. Um, that can be range jamming from a switch would send probably port up, down, uh, occasionally counters. Uh, firewalls would probably send you know, um, security events. Um, you know, APs could send associations and disassociations. So, um, you know, here's all our devices that are forwarding in um, that, that NetFlow information. Um, of course, they can come in and actually view the logs. So, again, um, I'm able to come in and say, oh, hey, you know, um, again, on the Meraki, yes, you go to the event logs and you're going to see some more information. Um, but there are more things like on the Meraki switch when you have a layer three firewall rule. Um, that, if there's a drop there, that does not get logged um, just through the amount of logs that I generate. And then again, if you have a traditional environment, uh, again, keep picking on my, my FortiGate and my Aruba people out there, um, you know, unless you set up a syslog collector explicitly, uh, you probably have to remote in each individual device and do a show log or whatever that looks like um, in that applicable um, device. So again, um, the syslog and that, that NetFlow would be a, uh, an additional license above and beyond. Um, what's included in that net subscription. So it does conclude the actual demo piece. I hope that was really helpful, everyone. Um, again, I hope the takeaways are that we're, you know, um, improving our practice all the time to better suit you and, and suit our clients um, in terms of our, our network capability. Um, if you do want access to AVIC, um, you know, things are, are already set up as we transition over, um, please reach out to your Matrix Networks account executive. Um, they'll connect you with our operations department for a little bit of an onboarding of creating your accounts and um, you know assisting a little bit and you know possibly setting up some of those subnets and, and those credentials. Thank you, Jeremy. Great demonstration. Really exciting stuff. Um, I didn't get any questions in, so this really concludes our conversation here. Are there any last-minute questions from folks? We'll pop them in the Q and A. We'll stick around for a couple more minutes here. But just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us and presenting this and um, really excited for what we can do for our clients and uh, for Matrix to be more efficient in serving you. So thank you.
All right, Ryan, I think we can safely draw this to a close. I'm not seeing any other Q&A come in. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody.